I'm gonna smash this. I'm gonna smash this out in one take because the battery light is flashing. The other one's just gone on charge and this is taking all morning to film. Okay guys, so welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk all things photography and today is the very difficult topic of how to price yourself and when to start asking for money for your photography work. So I just want to preface this. This is not a definitive guide. Usually with my chatty videos, it's stuff that I've gone through recently professionally, stuff that is fresh in my mind, either I've got notes on it or things like that. Yeah, I think this could come in handy to someone. So here we go. I'm going to do four quick tips on how to price yourself and when to price yourself. So let's start with tip number one, which is when to price yourself. Ultimately, you want to start asking for a fee when whoever you're giving the photos to is using your product to drive a profit for their business. So that could be for the local bike shop, the local restaurant, or the local t-shirt company. If they're trying to drive a profit from your picture, you should be getting a profit too. Now another example where someone might not be driving a profit but your expertise are required. So for example, weddings, baby photos, family portraits, any sort of portraiture, usually you're providing a service. They're not gonna drive a profit from that but they see that your skills are greater than Bob Average and they want your skills to be part of their pictures, be part of their portraits. So that's worth charging for. Another instance might be where you're completely confident in your work and you're getting great feedback. No one's approached you yet, but you've got a little bit of hustle and uh, you've started approaching other people. So a great way to do this is DMing on Instagram. Just reach out to people and say, hey, I can put you together a package for X amount of money. Here's an example of my work. I see that you blog or you need images for whatever reason. Here's the package, here's what I do, let's go. That is when to ask, but how much do you ask for? So three simple ways. First, and the most open and honest, ask what the client's budget is. Ask what they're willing to pay. You know, sometimes people approach me for work and they say, can you put a price together for this? And I've got no idea and no scope of what their business is. I don't know what they spend on advertising. I don't know what their intended budget is for the shoot. You know, you're blindfolded really. You're just throwing darts at a dartboard and hoping it hits. Rather than do that, simply ask them, have you got a rough idea of what your budget might be for this shoot? It's an open and honest way. One way you can sort of like preempt that is say, let me know your budget for this shoot and whatever it is, I'm sure we can put a package together that suits your needs and fits the budget. Now they might come back to you with a small budget that's too small, always barter, not always barter, but don't be too shy to barter. Is that the right term of phrase? If it's a little low, just say, that's a little lower than what I normally work for. I could start at what you've quoted plus X amount of money. I hope that makes sense. It's so vague talking about prices. This is what makes it so difficult. No one actually says any numbers, but there's such a broad spectrum of work. It's impossible to say any numbers. A little bit of common sense is what's needed and sort of gauging the uh, climate basically. And that would be one of the other points. The sub points to point two would be gauge the current climate gauge your competition. So for example, if you're a wedding or portrait photographer, the majority of those photographers have prices on their website. Have a look around for two things. People who you think are kind of at the same skill level as you, and that requires a bit of deep honesty there and also in your local area because prices differ for different areas. For example, in big cities like London, prices are much higher because everything's more expensive. Rent is crazy, congestion charge, parking's crazy, the current climate, everything's more expensive. But if you live out in a rural area, life is cheaper, then your fees aren't gonna be the same as a London photographer unless you're extremely sought after. But at this entry level, just gauge your current climate, gauge the competition, be honest where you are and you'll find a rough idea on price. And still in point number two, how much to charge? Well, what are you happy to earn? Sometimes even the when you're first starting out, it might be your first couple of jobs, even the feeling of having a transaction, of having someone give you money for your photography is payment enough. You know, it's not gonna you're not gonna it's not gonna change your life. The first few jobs, just getting into that habit of asking for money, sometimes that can be reward enough. So moving on to point number three, you've done a few jobs now, you've charged a few fees and you're getting comfortable, but you're kind of tired of charging 10, 20, 50, 100 pounds, whatever it may be for these jobs. You wanna start making a profit because you wanna go freelance. So something to consider is, are you making a profit? Now, how do you figure out 
if you're making a profit, if, especially if you're in full-time employment somewhere else. One way of figuring out if you're making a profit is figuring out your business overheads, your camera for example, how much was that? Did you pay for it up front? Are you paying for it monthly? Your phone, your, your rent, your lighting, your audio, anything like that. Figure out your overheads and kind of just figure out what that's costing you per month. Just make sure you're not making a loss. Which leads on nicely to point three, point one, or point four, whatever, um, is when do you go freelance or when to go all in on photography and quit everything else. So this is a really difficult one. So I'll just give you the story of how I went freelance and then hopefully you can take something from that. Basically, I was um, getting some small jobs and pushing my stuff out there. I was still working for other photographers freelance, but I was assisting. And then more and more jobs started colliding with my own work. So I would be booked on to assist on some job, but then I would get a brilliant offer to shoot something myself. And there was a couple of times when it collided. So I saved up a few months rent and yeah, took the plunge. First two months, I think I made hundred pounds. Not difficult because I'd put things in place. I'd saved up, made sure that if I had got no work at all, I'd be okay. So point number four, when to go freelance. My tip would be, yeah, when things start overlapping too much, I guess is the easy, easiest point, when things start overlapping too much. Because just think if you dedicated all your time into photography rather than having this other job, you'll make more money. You'll have more time to put in more effort and you'll be able to hopefully make full-time wage. I don't want to be responsible for anyone ending up homeless. I've really skimmed over everything, guys. However, there is this great book by an agent based here in London called Lisa Pritchard and it's called Running a, a Successful Photography Business. It really breaks everything down, including pricing, how to structure jobs, insurance, um, how to get help on production. So really like, it covers so much. How to get noticed, how to market yourself, everything like that. Business plans, business plans. You've got estimate templates there. So I will put the link for that in my bio. Check it out, I think it's 12 pounds on Amazon. Got that probably half a year ago. Gave myself a little business check over and it's made a massive difference and actually given me loads of confidence in how to approach everything. Kind of skimmed over things here, guys, but I try and keep it punchy and interesting for YouTube. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments, hit me up on the DMs, and we'll try and figure out the answers for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.